the sauce is starting to get there and one little thing I like to add to it is a little bit of mozzarella cheese it kind of helps to bind it all together mozzarella melts a lot smoother than Parmesan it's less oily and I'm putting approximately that's what I had left over in the refrigerator um, half a cup or so and then on to my next secret ingredient we're gonna put about a quarter cup of mayonnaise in this sauce and again I'm not measuring this this is just eyeballed and if you don't have to use mayonnaise you can actually put some sour cream in there if you like the flavor but right there is all you need and I just stir that in there real good the pasta is boiling nicely and again the eggs and the mayonnaise kind of help bind it together keeps it from separating and becoming real oily there's one last ingredient I want to add to our uh, Alfredo sauce and that is two cloves of garlic and once you break them off the bulb they're, they're covered in skin and here's a neat little trick to cutting garlic first off you cut off let me do this up here so you can actually see this you cut off just a little bit of each end and if there's any brown or green parts on there make sure to get all that off of there you take your knife and you just go like that and the peel comes right off all gone once you get all the skin off of there and off of your cutting board if there's any left over you can do that again a little harder make sure your handle clears the edge of your cutting board or else you're gonna hang up on the board so do that and then just a nice little run through with the knife to mix it up real good and then go the other way bring it all together here and that should be good it's going to cook down a little bit we're not going to brown it or, or uh, saute it we're just going to stick it right in that sauce so scrape it off the knife scrape it on the knife and we just add that right into our alfredo sauce get that stirred in there and make sure to keep stirring this and now here's another fresh vegetable we're going to put in here this is going to go in very last i'm going to core a couple of good nice ripe tomatoes our local grocery store doesn't always have the freshest produce but today i was pretty impressed with these tomatoes and of course you can grow your own if you have a garden if you're into that kind of thing. I have a little garden out front, but you know, it's still May. Nothing's really growing yet. But that's what the grocery store is for. And get that in the garbage. And all I really do to, to dice these up is I take it and I slice it into nice slices. And again, good sharp knife. You have to have a good sharp knife. It's one of the most important things in your kitchen is your knife. Go to the go to Jewel Osco or any of your bigger stores and get a nice butcher's knife and get a sharpener. I'll show you that in a, in a little while here. So once you slice these tomatoes, you take about half of it and you run through it one way. I think I actually need to sharpen this knife. I'll tell you what, I've got a nice slicing knife right here. This thing is sharp as hell. Well, maybe it's not. <laughs> Okay, so you run through your tomato one way. That's better. And you turn your cutting board, run through it the other direction. It doesn't have to be perfect. Because you're just, you're just going to add these right to the uh, pasta and chicken and sauce right on top. Alright, I'll go ahead and cut this other one and I'll see you in a couple of minutes. All right, so I'm giving this another stir since I'm over here. And again, you want to just stir it every every chance you get. It's been a couple of minutes now. The sauce is nice and thickened. Looks real good. Sometimes I thicken it with a little flour, but it really doesn't need it if you put the mayonnaise and all that stuff in there. Now for our chicken. Of course, if you happen to have a meat thermometer around, that's the best way to make sure it's fully cooked without overcooking it. And you want to reach an internal temperature of about 165, 170 degrees. But if you don't have one of these, which most people probably don't, then all you need to do, remember, we're going to cut this up so it doesn't have to look pretty. You take your 
your thickest piece, and this is the piece I didn't fillet earlier. You go ahead and cut down the middle, being careful not to scrape your nonstick pan if you're in a nonstick pan. And what you want to look for is all the juices are clear and there's no pink in there whatsoever. And I think we're just about there. I'm going to let that simmer a little longer. When you're steaming it like this, you almost can't overcook it. As long as you have a lid on there, it's not going to dry out. I'm going to give our pasta a good stir here. Make sure we're not sticking here. And actually, I might just go ahead and give it a test. I find the best way to test pasta, people say throw a piece at the, at the wall and see if it sticks. Forget all that. Take it out. Let it cool. Just take one little piece out. Let it cool real good. And eat it. And that's the best way to tell if it's where you want it. And this needs a couple more minutes, not much more. It's just about right. It's a little al dente, which is just a fancy way of saying undercooked. And we're going to give our sauce a stir again. Remember, just stir this every chance you get. You don't want it sticking. You don't want it burning. You don't want it separating. 